Hello, it's Charlotte and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. In today's video, we are going to be talking about how to get started with SEO on your Squarespace website. I'm going to walk you through a couple different points. I'm going to share my screen, really show you and take you along through the different pointers um, so that you can yeah, see exactly what I'm doing, have examples on a website to follow along with because I know that SEO can be quite daunting when you're first getting started you know there's a lot of information online there's a lot of like you know different aspects of start here do this do that and you probably want someone to just point you in the right direction so consider that what I'm here to do today and we are going to cover that we're going to show you how to begin with Squarespace SEO um, on your own website so follow along so if we haven't met yet then hello my name is Charlotte I'm a Squarespace SEO expert and here on my YouTube channel and my blog I create lots of content about Squarespace SEO and websites online marketing and business so you can take a look at some of the other content that I have here um, but Today, specifically, we're talking about how to begin with Squarespace SEO. What are the basics? What can you do to get started? So I recommend that you log into the back end of your Squarespace website and follow along with the different pointers that I'm doing um, and you know, make some notes if you want to, but otherwise come back and refer to it. So I'm gonna share my screen here and let's get started. Okay, we are going to begin by quickly having me tell you that I have a Squarespace SEO checklist and I thought I'd mention it because maybe you wanted to download it. So this, <laughs> this Squarespace SEO checklist has been downloaded by thousands and thousands of people, whether they are complete beginners who are just looking for somewhere to, where to start on Squarespace SEO, they want someone to point them in the right direction, list out the things to do. Or if you're perhaps maybe more intermediate, you want to make sure you have not forgotten anything, you've like dotted your I's and crossed your T's, as they say, then this Squarespace SEO checklist is for you. So I'll leave a link to it down below. You can grab a copy and thank me later once you have it. Okay, let's get started with our first point on like where to begin with Squarespace SEO. Okay. So when it comes to your Squarespace website, there are different SEO factors. I'm just going to kind of talk to you quickly and explain this. There are different SEO factors. Some of them happen on the back end of the website and others of them happen on the front end of the website. It's what Google sees when they crawl and index the content of your website. So let's begin by going through a couple of the different settings on the back end of your site. So I have a Squarespace website here, and this is a demo website. To be clear, this is not a real company. Um, I've made a fake website for a fake construction company, and I think it's on version 7.1. Um, but if you're on 7.0, the general process will be pretty much the same. So let's go through the different settings that we have here. So first of all, from the back end of the website, you're going to click on settings. Okay. Um, then you are going to click on third party tools click on connected accounts. And here you are either going to connect or verify that you have connected here to Google Search Console. You see there, there's that Google G. You're gonna click there and then basically it's gonna prompt you to like log in with your email address. So just click follow the steps through that. And this is really important because Google Search Console is basically um, the bot, Google's bot, the search engine bot that comes to your website to crawl and index the website content that you have. And when it crawls and indexes your content, basically in a you know long story short, they're looking at your website to see not only what pages you have, but how each page is created, how it's laid out, how it's designed. Um, they need to understand what each page, each blog post, each product, each gallery is so that Google can potentially return it in an online search. So not only is Google coming to your website to like learn about your website, but they're also adding it to their database and then comparing you to everyone else who could also rank for that page. So this is the first step, making sure that you are connected and verified um, with Google Search Console. So perhaps you've already done that. Perhaps this is new, but this is your first step, the very first setting that you're going to want to do. Okay, now let's exit out of that. The next thing we're going to do is, again, from the main dashboard, we're going to click on settings. Then you are going to go to, um, where is it? Marketing. Then SEO appearance. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm like, you know, when sometimes you look at something, you're like, where is it? Where is it? Oh, my God, it's right there. Okay. Then next thing we're going to look here is the SEO appearance um, 
field. And there's two different sections that I want to highlight here. The first one is the SEO description field, and the second is the SEO title format. So let's begin with a quick overview of the SEO description field. Basically, this setting is one of the first things that Google sees when they crawl and index your website. So before they even start looking at the content on the web pages, blog posts, product pages, the front end stuff, before they even start seeing that, first of all, they're going to look at the SEO description, this setting on the back end. So it's really important that we fill it out. So if you don't have anything, that's great. We're starting it out. But if you maybe have something, but you realize after I'm about to tell you that maybe it could be improved, then no worries, just follow along and improve it. So a couple of pointers of what I want you to keep in mind here is that you're telling Google everything they need to know about your website, your brand, and your business. So you want to know like who you are, what your name is, maybe where you're located, if that's relevant, it might not be for every website, what kind of clients or customers or audience you work towards, like, you know, the group of people, um, any particular products or services that you want to highlight, if there's any maybe like partnerships that are really important or any like special, you know, links that you have, whatever it happens to be, you might want to put that in the SEO description. And you probably want to use as much of the 400 character limit as you can. You want to really use the full space to tell Google about your website, your brand, your business, all that sort of thing. And I recommend that you kind of like front load the most important keywords at the start, because not only is that helpful to Google from like a hierarchy point of view, but also if you look up here in the search appearance preview, you can see that if your website shows up in certain online searches and like the homepage, for example, shows up in online searches, then this first little part of the SEO description might show up as well in the search results. So again, the person won't see the full thing, but they might just see the first little bit. So if they're skimming it, um, you know, you want to make sure that they see the most important bits at the start. We're mostly writing it for Google, but I guess a little bit we're writing it for human, but again, use natural language, try to hit the full character limit, front load the most important keywords, and there you have it. So this is for your website as a whole. Okay, the next thing on this page is the SEO title format. So in most cases, if you have not touched anything yet, it's just going to say percentage S. And percentage S basically is pulling from the code Percentage S is kind of like the code that pulls from what is your website's site title. So you can see here, it's pulling the site title of like Coastal Construction Limited, my fake company name. But one thing you can also do is maybe add a few more keywords in here. So maybe talk about your location or a bit more about your products or your services, things like that. So this is something you want to do, but I will remind you, you want to add, if you add any extra keywords, you want to make sure you're adding it to the home tab but also to the pages and to the collection items tab. Okay, so make sure that those settings are taken care of in those three places. So once you've got that done, click save. Okay. All right, excellent. And then another thing that you're gonna do is now you're gonna do something similar for the SEO settings on every page itself. So you can go to a page, um, and click over to like open the page settings, click to SEO. And now scroll down here and you're gonna see there's the SEO title as well as the SEO description field. So once again, um, the SEO title field might be pretty similar to what you have in the page title, but you can also expand on it a little bit if you want to. And what you put in the SEO description is now you're telling Google what this particular page is about. So really specific to the content of this page. If it's about, you know, in this case, it's about one particular service. So really going in and telling Google all about that one service, right? Who you are, where you're located, what you do, who it's for, service details, anything like that. Um, you could do something similar if it's like about your company, about your portfolio, like anything like that. Okay. Um, you also in blog posts will have um, SEO description fields to fill out too. So whether we're talking about a brand new blog post that you're about to write, or if you're going to go back to existing blog posts, you're going to click here on the settings, open it up, and then click on the SEO tab. And then once again, make sure that you're filling out this SEO description field for the blog post. Really tell Google what the blog post is about. Use keywords, make sure that Google has a full understanding and overview of what you're talking about in the blog post. And you'll see that you can do something similar on product pages as well. 
Um, and yeah, there's like a marketing section where you can fill out the SEO description for each product. Again, make it unique to that particular product. And that is going to be really helpful for Google. Okay. Those are some of the basic settings that we have on the back end of your Squarespace website. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is making sure that you set up and create a Google business profile. Okay. And the first thing I will say is that Google business profiles are important for anyone that wants to improve their local SEO. Okay. So local SEO is basically if you offer a if you have a business, you offer a service, you sell products in a specific geographic area. Okay. So maybe you have like a physical storefront, a location, a warehouse, whatever, or if you do services for a particular area, like maybe you are a cleaning service or a plumber or like a traveling RMT or something that like goes to people's houses. Um, even if you don't have a, a storefront, you like serve an area or a town or whatever, then you care about local SEO and having a Google business profile will be really helpful. Google business profiles are not necessary for someone that maybe just like has a, a blog, but you don't care about ranking locally, right? Or if you offer services, but maybe you work only with clients who are online. And so it doesn't matter if they're local to you or not, then you maybe don't need a Google business profile. But if you do try to work with people locally, then this is something to consider. So having a Google profile, basically, I'll just quickly show you. Um, if you type something in, like, again, using just the example of our fake construction company, if I typed in like residential construction company, Santa Cruz into Google, you'll see here that like it highlights certain businesses in the map view. And then you can like kind of click on it and it will open up the profile about the business in further detail. So it links to like the company info, the website, like all that kind of stuff. This here, what you're seeing is a Google business profile. So you can set that up and again, connect it to your Squarespace website. Just follow the prompts and make sure that you watch that video that I've linked to up above that talks in a bit more detail about Google business profiles and how to set them up. Okay. The next thing that we are going to talk about is on-page SEO factors. Okay. So on-page SEO factors, there's quite a few different things that you want to think about, but basically... Um, you know, let's just pull up, I don't know, a blog post here so that you can follow along with this is on my website. So when it comes to having a page or a blog post or something, you want to make sure that you have like a nice clear title, like you're telling Google what it is. Um, you also want to make sure that you have like long form content. Like you can see, this is a nice, really robust blog. I'm talking in a lot of detail. It's not just, you know, like two or 300 words. If I'm writing something, you want it to be long form content. Watch this video up above to learn a bit more about long form content. Um, some other on-page SEO factors you want to think about are the title and the URL slug. So the URL slug here is kind of like, you know, get started with Squarespace SEO in 2024. See how nice and clear that is? Google loves it. Really, you know, nice and straightforward kind of thing. So the URL slug. You also want to think about any headings that you're using. So again, you can see that I use lots of nice headings. They're really clear and uh, straightforward. I've got different like H2s, H3s. Um, you also want to use images throughout the web page, whether it's a web page, a blog post, product page, whatever. Not nice images. I've also included like some video content, but you know that may or may not be relevant to you. Um, yeah. Oh, and another thing is also links. So whether that is an internal link to somewhere else on your website, or if it's an external link where you're linking away from your website to somewhere else on the internet, um, links can also be really helpful for SEO. So these are all different on-page SEO factors. And you want to think about it for, again, the web pages, the blog posts, the product pages, anything like that that you have on your website. These are all things to really lean into. Okay, then the next thing that that brings us to about like how to get started with SEO is actually blogging. So <laughs> funny that. So as you can see here, like for example, I have a blog on my website and I use my blog to really create lots and lots of content around my area of interest or expertise, which as I'm sure you can figure out is Squarespace SEO. So I write lots of content that talks about SEO. Because not only does that help me rank for, you know, relevant keywords or relevant searches 
you know, but also you can see here in my blog posts, I casually mention in the introduction, like, here's my service. Here's some of the different like programs that I offer, yada, yada, because I want to make sure that I'm directing people to different places on my offerings to the money-making sections of my business right off the bat. And this is helpful in terms of blog, because again, a lot of times, if you have a good SEO friendly blog, the person will be coming to your blog post without having seen any of the other content on your website yet. They don't know who you are, what you do, what you offer. So using your blog post as a way to kind of let them know that is really helpful. And you can see here again, just even skimming this, like I have a nice long form content, there's images, there's whatever. I wrap it up by once again, linking to some of the important things that I want to highlight for my products, my services, whatever it is. And so you can do something similar about that, link to more related content that they might enjoy, anything like this. So blogging is so helpful for SEO. And I have a lot more content about blogs, um, <laughs> about blogging both on my blog and also on my YouTube channel. So uh, take a look at that and that will get started. Okay. And then the last but not least thing that I want to talk about is backlinks. So backlinks are basically anytime another website is linking to your website. It's called a backlink or an inbound link. And these are really helpful for SEO because not only can it drive traffic to your website, which we love, we all want traffic to come to our site, but also Google will see that you have these backlinks from other relevant high quality websites. And they'll be like, oh, cool. This is something that can improve your domain authority or make you seem more legit, valuable, um, and therefore worthy to be showing up in online search results. So I do have another video that talks more about like backlinks and how to get them. But this, when it comes to backlinks, I recommend that you do this kind of a little bit later in your Squarespace SEO journey. So start off by really optimizing the settings, the on-page content, get a few blogs under your belt. And then once you have a really solid foundation, once you've kind of like, as I say, water your own grass first, then you can start getting these backlinks from other websites. I know backlinks are really fun and creative and it's cool to like connect with others and stuff, but sit tight, get to it at some point, but maybe not the very first thing that you do, okay? All right, my friend, there you have it. In this video, we have covered how to get started with the basics of Squarespace SEO. I hope this was helpful. I hope it maybe taught you something new. It pointed you in the right direction. It maybe gave you a couple ideas of where to start, something that you might have missed in these like beginner early stages. And yeah, take a look at the SEO checklist that I've linked to down below. Grab a copy of that. Take a look peruse the other blog posts or YouTube videos that I have here on my channel. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. And I will see you again soon in the next video.